Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Really lovely to see you all on this beautiful, beautiful spring morning, isn't it glorious? Yeah. Uh, lovely to see people from St. John's, lovely to see people from All Saints, and lovely to see people from St. James as well. And uh, it's just a blessing to be with you again. This morning we had um, a sort of masochist's mass, as it's sometimes known, 8 a.m. Book of Common Prayer, Holy Communion at St. James, and we had 13 people to that, which was wonderful as well. Um, just as well the dog woke me up at half past five this morning. As we're gathering, let me begin with a prayer, and then we'll follow along the rest of the service in our service books, beginning with the greeting. But for now, just let us begin with a prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the continuation of Easter time, which we see in the season around us and also in the awakening of our hearts. Lord, we pray that everything that is said or done or sung today will be for your honour and your glory and for the extension of your holy kingdom. Amen. Amen. So please do join with me in the thing when we get to the hymn, but except the very last one, where we're going to go outside and sing it together without masks. So isn't that going to be a blessing that we can actually sing together all outside? And when we do that right at the end, we'll have the blessing outside as well. But we'll all troop out, march out. But do remember when we're outside, I'll remind you again later, just to keep social distance. Okay, so we can have our masks off when we're outside and sing. But what a blessing that will be. We did that all saints last time. Uh, and people weren't too tired of my voice. Uh, we did have Warren with us last week, and so that uh, helped. Let's begin proper then. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. Yes, so our first hymn is going to be played, and we listen along to it. It is Love is the Word, Love is the Way. How appropriate for Easter time. Just enjoy the words and the music sung for us today by the Academy of St. Martin's in the field. Today is the first time we're going to publish the bands of a young couple who are going to be married in this church 
in June. So that's absolutely wonderful that we can start to officiate at weddings again as we emerge, hopefully, from the pandemic. So I'm going to ask Charlotte and Zach to stand now. I'm going to publish your bands, and then we're going to pray for you, Charlotte and Zach, as the community of faith. Obviously, you have family and friends on your wonderful marriage day, but today we stand with you as your brothers and sisters in Christ. So, I publish the bands of marriage between Zachary Joel Hopkins and Charlotte Elizabeth Brown, both of Holy Trinity Nailsey, and previously this parish. This is the first time of asking if any of you know why there is any reason in law why they, not, why they may not marry, you are to declare it to me afterwards. Let's pray for them. Loving Heavenly Father, I thank you for Charlotte and Zach and their love for each other. And in that love they find in their hearts, we see a mirror of your love and the way you call us to be self-sacrificing to be enduring, to have a love that's unconditional and occasionally covers wrong things. Lord, bless them as they prepare for their marriage day, knit them together as one in their future life and be with them. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Charlotte and Zach. Come to a time of confession, and we're going to join in the prayer of confession, which you can find on your service booklets. This is our moment when it's just between us individually and our Lord Jesus Christ, our Maker and Creator, who knows the secrets of our inmost heart. All those things we may keep hidden from others, nothing is hidden from Him. The good news is He welcomes us when we turn to Him in penitence and in faith. So confidently and penitentially we can pray together. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. And now may Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all his goodness, keeping you in life eternal. Amen. Amen. We stand, we're going to join as newly forgiven people in the celebratory words of the glory. We say together, glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy upon us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Risen Christ, your wounds declare your love for the world and the wonder of your risen life. Today give us compassion and also courage to risk ourselves for those whom you call us to serve. For the glory of the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. to come to a reading from God's Word. We have our Gospel reading now, and Julian, 
can't quite see where you are, Julian, if you'd like to bring our gospel reading, come on down to the lectern, that would be great. The uh, first reading is taken from John, chapter 15, verses 1 to 8. The vine and the branches. I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes, so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, Ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Julia. Come to our second hymn, which will be familiar to many of you, I'm sure. Oh Jesus, I have promised, and be thinking a little more in the sermon in a minute about how God is a covenantal God and calls us to make promises. Our next hymn, Oh Jesus, I have promised.
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, how blessed we are by this wonderful weather, and it of course means we can go out and see each other again. Can't we have a cup of tea in the garden? which is fantastic. Uh, and this week I was invited out by Warren and Diana to have a cup of tea in the garden. Now I can see when I arrived that Diana has had Warren hard at work in the garden. Now, some of you were just sharing with me, some of you men as you were coming in, how your wives have a list of tasks for you. Charlotte and Zach, you've got all this to look forward to. Fantastic. So Warren has been building this pond, and he showed me all around his pond, and even some tadpoles. I can look forward to frogs. Even some tadpoles that were there. And then he showed me the um, a particularly sunny patch where he put a vine. And this vine was growing up. Well, last week we had the image of a shepherd laying down across the entrance of a gateless sheepfold. And that biblical, that strong biblical picture was of Christ literally being the door, the gate, laying down his life for others. And like the shepherds from last week, vineyards were also a common sight in first century Palestine in Jesus' time. So when Jesus is saying things like we hear in our gospel reading, like, I am the vine, you are the branches, and when he says things like, my father is the vine grower, and abide in me, that would have had deep resonance to his first century biblical heroes. I think we need a slightly more modern illustration. Unless you're Warren Diana or you're good at growing vines in North Somerset, best of luck for that and I'll help you sample the wine if you are. <laughs> what modern illustration could we use to help us get an idea for some of the points that Jesus was making when he said, abide with me? Well, it's not often you're going to hear a vicar say the next words I say. If you've got a mobile phone, can you get it out, please? If you've got a mobile phone, can you get it out? Don't hear that often in church. You get out your mobile phones, everybody. It's probably a good time to check it's on silent. Unlike mine was earlier when I got a call. I don't know if you heard that just before the service. So you've got your mobile in front of you. I'd like to just you to hold it in the palm of your hand. There's two points I want to make about your mobile that I think are related to vines and are similar to the points that Jesus is making. Okay, here we go. A vine leaf has to be connected to something in order to absorb its nutrients. It has to be connected to a branch if it's going to flourish. And similarly, your mobile phone has to be connected to a network in order for it to function. We've all been there, haven't we? You're up a mountain, or you're out, and you want to make an important call. It's at that precise moment, unbeknown to humankind, that you have no signal. Is this just me, folks? No signal. Or you're waiting for an important call. And you're looking at it, maybe it's a job interview you're waiting to hear from, the birth of a child maybe, and you're out somewhere, no signal. We've all been there. We know what it's like when we can't get through to those around us. It needs to be connected to a network to function, a bit like a vinyl. A vinyl also needs to have its roots in good soil to flourish, doesn't it? The mobile phone needs to be frequently routed to its charger to keep it powered up. And if your mobile phone is anything like mine, you probably need to do that a couple of times a day then. So when Jesus is saying, I'm the true vine, abide in me, his hearers, like us today, are being asked the question, what's keeping you rooted and how are you connected? Let's look at that first point. How are we rooted? Commentators and psychologists point to a cultural shift from the 1940s, 50s spirit of we're all in it together. You've probably heard that resurface during the pandemic. We're all in it together. Because there's been that greater, deeper sense of community, hasn't there? As people have looked, after, looked out for those around them. 
And we've clapped, haven't we, for the NHS carers and the delivery folk, all the people who perhaps might have been easy to slip the mind in previous life. Now we really value that. We're all in it together. But that emphasis in culture shifted, didn't it? 1960s onwards, 1960s in particular, it was all about individual freedom. Freedom. And nowadays, it suggests to you, we see the continuation of individualism through the rise of what the professor of psychology at San Diego University describes as the current generation, which is iGen, the i generation, the selfie generation, which is predominantly focused on oneself. The primary emphasis is one's own happiness and gratification. The implication is that's going to make us feel good. But I find it deeply fascinating, but also saddening, that despite such emphasis on personal freedom, high suicide rates persist. Depression and anxiety remain real issues, and people still deep in their hearts, they might have all the outward trappings of success, but deep in their hearts, they long for meaning. It's kind of like we're out in the hillside, up towards Beacon Batch, which is where my wife and I went last week. But instead of sunny like it was, it's foggy. Someone's giving you the wrong map, and you don't have a compass. We're free to select our path, sure, but without a sense of direction. So when Jesus is saying to his hearers, I am the true vine, he's inviting them, abide with me, put your roots in me if you want a real sense of hope and meaning, a life with direction and a heart that's at peace. John Locke wrote, no man is an island. I suggest to you that we're not created by God to be individuals, but instead to find our identity and our meaning in Jesus Christ. Think back to that image of the mobile phone. It needs to be rooted to have something that powers it up to be what it's designed to be. Saint Augustine of Hippo put it this way, Lord, you've made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless until they find their rest in you. The second point follows from that and is about being connected. We are the branches. Jesus is the vine. Abiding in the true vine means that we begin to see our place in history. We begin to see our place in his story, history, God's story, that began with the creation of the universe and continues to where we are today, the fifth Sunday of Easter. If a branch is removed, as Jesus said in the Gospel, it's not going to thrive on its own. It withers and dies. We need to be part of something. I suggest to you that part of our God-given identity as human beings is that we are meant to live in community, not as isolated individuals. Think of that mobile again. It needs to be connected to a network to reach others. Sure, you can use it offline you've got about half the functionality. It seems to me God's placed a natural obligation on us, a healthy limitation on our personal freedom, which is to be concerned about the welfare of others, to love our neighbour. Author and commentator David Brooks, who writes for the New York Times, says this, freedom is not the absence of restraint, but the freedom to choose to commit to something that gives you meaning. He gives the illustration of a concert pianist, free to choose to play piano, but it required commitment to see it through and make that free choice have meaning. He draws, he's a Jew, and he draws on biblical influence to suggest that true meaning and f freedom are found in promise making. Those who've looked at their Bibles would see a covenant in them. A covenant is not like a contract. A contract you can break, been in business like I have, then you know if there are punitive clauses if you break it. We can dismiss some. That's not a covenant. That's not like God's love. That's not like the marriage contract, even though it sometimes goes wrong. A covenant is where we keep our side even when the other person does not. David Brooks suggests we are covenant making people in four areas of our lives our spouse, family, 
our vocation, our faith, and our community. And so abiding in Christ, the true line, means we recognise that we're made in the image of God, that we find deep meaning as individual humans by being promise-making, by being covenant-bearers, and in doing that, we bear the image of a covenant-making God. We are meant to be covenant makers, promise makers, because we're made in the image of a promise making, covenant making God. And whatever you feel today, whether that's full of the joy of Easter still, with the beauty outside, which is absolutely wonderful and uplifting, or whether you feel deeply anxious and concerned about something, even a loved one's personal health, the promise of God is that he will never leave us or forsake us and his love extends to each of us unconditionally. This same living God invites us all to abide in him. Amen. I forgot to do this at the eight o'clock, so I've written it on my little sheet here. I just want to remind folks about Thy Kingdom Come, which is a Church of England initiative that's taken on by other denominations as well. Thy Kingdom Come is Ten days of prayer that occurs from Ascension through to Pentecost. To us this year, that's the 13th and the 23rd of May. And those of us in the three churches of Winscombe, Sanford and Churchill, you'll see this on your newsletter this week, but I wanted to give you a heads up this morning. I wanted to invite you to do three things. To pray. Pray for five minutes. All these three things have five in them. I've, I've created them that way to help us, help me remember. So pray for five minutes a day for each of those. Set a little timer on that mobile phone you've got out and count it down. Pray for five minutes. Pray for five people that they might come to a deeper sense of faith and meaning, this hope and promise of God they might find meaningful in their lives. And pray for Winscombe, Sanford and Churchill, for this parish for the next five years that we see the Holy Spirit lead us and guide us, and that, like the true vine, we might flourish. So five minutes, five people, five years. Uh, try and get that in the newsletter for next week. Amen. Yes. So we are back to our service booklets and joining in again. We're on page three, and uh, we stand for this declaration of faith. In joy and hope, we can say together, Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a slave. He was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death on the cross. Therefore God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every voice proclaim, Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Please be seated once again as we come to a time of that prayer, and I'm going to ask Emma to lead us in prayer today. Thank you, Emma. Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me, and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. So, in the power of the Spirit, and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. <clears throat> Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in faith. We pray for our church, for our world, for those we love, and for ourselves. We pray for your church, and give thanks for Reverend Hiscox, and for the blessing of all our retired clergy and lay readers who minister to the needs of your churches in Winscombe, Sanford and Churchill. We pray for their unique and individual ministry, that they may be continually encouraged by the Holy Spirit. Lord, continue to bless your church, that it may reveal your presence and the power of the resurrection. May the church community rejoice in the renewal of their lives in Christ and to celebrate in joy. And in that joy, reach out to others and, and, and speak the good news of Jesus. We ask your blessing on all who are new to their search in faith 
in you, in faith in you, and pray for all who are struggling with doubt and darkness. Lord, in your mercy, hear prayer. Lord, bless the world with your peace, the peace it cannot achieve on its own. We pray for peace between nations and peoples, and ask for your, ask your blessings upon all peacemakers. We pray for all who live in fear of this pandemic, thinking particularly of the people of India, where medical supplies and hospital beds are in such desperately short needs or short supply. We pray that our nation and others will continue to help where they are able to, providing aid and vaccines to India and to other developing nations who are struggling with the effects of the pandemic. We pray too for those who live in fear of persecution, for the dispossessed and the refugee. We pray for young and old, for the weak, for the hungry and for the sick. Lord, bring them peace. We pray for our world here in North Somerset, for those struggling to feed families, for those in debt, and for those in poor housing. We pray for their distress and for their comfort. Enable us as a church to help where we can, to see and to act as you reveal their plight to us. Help your church to be an instrument in their lives, and may they see the power of Jesus in our actions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, bless our homes and families with the joy of your presence. May our homes be ever open to you and your love. We pray for all who struggle with chronic illness and pain, for those who are lonely and for those who mourn. Bring comfort to all in need and may we be your instrument to bring them your peace. We pray for our hospitals, hospice, and places of care. We pray for all carers and those who visit and comfort the sick, for those who listen and for those who pray. Protect all those we love from harm and pray especially for families who are separated. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for our own weakness and failings, for those times when we have failed you, for the times we have justified a reason for looking the other way, for the times we have kept our hands tightly on our money, avoiding the needy hand, for the unkind words we have thought and the deaf ear we have turned. Lord, forgive us and make us whole again. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Emma, so much for those wonderful prayers. Um, just want to take a moment to mention a specific request for prayer I received uh, yesterday from Richard Noy. Please, can we pray for Jill Noy, his wife, who's been taken into hospital. Some of you, I think, already know about that. But please do, in a moment of silence now, lift up Jill, but also lift up those people who are known perhaps only to you that you want to lift up in prayer before the Lord. Let's take a moment to do that just now in silence. We join together in the words of the Lord's Prayer, which is on page four of your sheets. We pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever.
we come to the end of our service now, and this is the moment where we're going to wander outside, take our masks off and be released to sing at long last. Now to do that, before you get up and hurry outside, do take a copy of our last hymn. We should be with you right there with your service orders. It's I, the Lord of Sea and Sky. We don't have the benefit of Warren helping us with the first note, so I'm afraid it's going to be resting on me. No pressure. We just head out uh, and we'll finish with the blessing outside as well. So if you'd like to follow Trish and I. Trish, I think we're going out that door, aren't we? So can everybody just turn around and see Trish? Trish, give us a wave. That's the door. We're going out and she will lead us to a place where we can all gather. Some of you might have noticed we've arranged for a 21-gun salute. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> I thought that was the note to start <laughs> uh, uh, Trish has just reminded me before we sing, uh, St John's folk, um, please collect a nomination form for PCC. Electoral roll. Electoral roll, thank you. Warden. And church warden, etc. Um, and where can those be found, Trish, shout it out? Uh, on the radiator by the door that we've just come through. Okay, so don't leave today if you're a St John's regular um, and uh, you need one of those forms. Okay, I'm going to try and start us off. We're on the seat, on the on the sheet. I, the Lord of Sea and Sky. <clears throat> I, the Lord of Sea and Sky, I have heard my people cry. All who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will save. I who made the stars of night. I will make the darkness bright. Who will bear my light to them? Who shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you lead me. I will hold your people in my heart. I, the Lord of snow and rain, I have borne my people's pain. I have wept with love of them. They turn away. I will break their hearts of stone, give them hearts for love alone. I will speak my word to them. Who shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you lead me. I will hold your people in my heart. I, the Lord of wind and flame, I will tend the poor and lame, I will set a feast for them, my hand will save. Finest bread I will provide, till their hearts be satisfied, I will give my life to them, whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord. If you leave me, I will hold your people in my heart. Absolutely wonderful. Wasn't it great to sing again? Mm, yes. Oh, yes. Let me just finish with the blessing. And now may the peace of God that passes all understanding.
and even gunshots <laughs> be in your heart and your mind. And the knowledge and love of Jesus Christ, his Son, persist with you always. Blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you and all those this day he calls you to love and care for. Amen. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Lovely to see you this morning. God bless you. Thank you.